In 1976, Eon Productions hired a company called Perry Oceanographic Incorporated, located in Riviera Beach, Florida, to custom build a Lotus Esprit S1 that could transform into a submarine for the filming of the James Bond movie, The Spy Who Loved Me. The car was affectionately named Wet Nelly, as a nod to the gyrocopter named Little Nelly in the 1967 Bond film You Only Live Twice. However, it is essential to note that the vehicle used in the film was not a standard submarine. It was a wet submarine, which means the interior did not remain dry, and the occupants had to wear scuba gear to operate, and additionally the vehicle could not function on land, as it was a full-time submarine, contrary to what was portrayed in the movie. Following the completion of the film, the submarine went on a promotional tour, and it was later shipped to Long Island and placed in a storage unit, which had been prepaid for 10 years. However, due to financial difficulties faced by the production company, the storage unit went up for auction in a manner similar to what you might have seen on the TV show Storage Wars. Bidders could only look into the main door of the unit, and Wet Nelly was concealed and not visible from the front. So the eventual buyers ended up purchasing the storage unit with the intention of acquiring the tools located inside. The subsequent details are somewhat unclear. Some sources suggest that the car sat in the new owner's backyard and served as a play area for a while, and others claim that while the car was being transported, some truckers contacted the new owners over a CB radio call, informing them that James Bond's car was on the back of their trailer. In any case, the car's authenticity was confirmed by Doug Redenius, the co-founder of the Ian Fleming Foundation. The car was then outfitted with a custom trailer and underwent minor repairs for cosmetic damage. It went on a brief tour, including a display at the Peterson Automotive Museum. Although the car was placed in an auction after that, there was significant celebrity interest in it before the auction even began including inquiries from Elon Musk, a figure often likened to a real-life Bond character. In September 2013, at the RM auction in London, Elon Musk successfully acquired the vehicle for $997,000 US. Musk expressed that his intention was to use the Tesla drivetrain as a way to restore the car making it a fully functional submarine that could also drive on land as seen in the film. However, over the past 10 years, there hasn't been any further updates on this project. It is unclear whether Musk is still pursuing this ambitious endeavor, but it is worth noting that Musk did mention in a tweet that the car's styling had influenced the Cybertruck. And as of now, it remains unclear whether Musk will find a way to turn the dream of a driving submarine car into a reality, or if it was simply an idea that didn't come to fruition. Let me know in the comments what you think Elon Musk's plans are for this unique vehicle, and tell me what you would do if you had his kind of money. Thank you for watching. Have a good one. We'll see you in the next episode.